Hello friends and welcome back to Chronically Overdressed. If you are joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Christine the Glambassador and I post videos and vlogs here once a week on vintage style, hair tutorials, beauty tips, travel, and history. Um, so I hope you will subscribe and join us for more fun. I started my Facebook group, 1930s, 1940s, Authentic Hairstyling for Ladies, because I saw an absence of specific resources for understanding and learning about authentic vintage hairstyling. Um, and I really wanted to build a resource and a community on how we can achieve these styles on a daily basis rather than just for pure glamour or special occasions. So when I started dressing in vintage, it was mostly pinup, rockabilly, and more like retro vintage inspired looks. Um, it really wasn't until much, much later in my journey that I really started to discern the nuances and differences between the more historically accurate and the authentic looks of the 1930s and 40s and the modern interpretations. Today, I wanna to give you my understanding of what makes a vintage hairstyle look authentic. group, I thought it might be a really good idea to make some posts showing authentic styles versus modern interpretations of, you know, various styles, hairstyles. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Unfortunately, the comment sections went really crazy and got really heated in there. Um, it seemed I ruffled a few feathers. Um, so I just stopped. But it is a subject that I still think that we should talk about. Um, I think it's important to know the differences. Uh, so please don't come at me in the comment section tell me how, how wrong I am. These are my opinions. If you don't like them, that's perfectly fine. I'm absolutely willing to have discussions with people. Um, but I'm, you know, not interested in having a heated discussion on this. Please know that this is in no way meant to attack anyone, any one group of people, any style, um, or to claim that one style is better than the other. It is simply a way of identifying the style. And now I am not a vintage reenactor. I do not subscribe to the vintage purist or vintage elitist mindset at all. But for me and my chosen aesthetic, I do prefer to emulate a more authentic vintage look and style. So in my opinion, there are two main things that make a vintage hairstyle look more authentic. Um, number one, the cut of the hair. And number two, the tools and techniques that are used to achieve that style. So I'm sure by now you have heard of the midi haircut. Um, it's the cut that is more, most referenced to achieve that quintessential 1940s look. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the history of the cut. Ivan Anderson, or Ivan of Hollywood, is the creator of the cut. He was a prominent hairstylist for Warner Brothers Studios in the 1940s. And in 1947, he published this book, creative hair shaping and hairstyling you can do. So this is where we find those diagrams of each of the iterations of the midi haircuts. Um, the midi cuts are recognized by the, the U shape in the back of the hair and the heavy, heavy layering. So it's said that he created this cut out of a need for a haircut that provided a good basis for the elaborate hairstyles of the time um, without disregarding the need for simplicity due to the war effort. So I am sure that we have seen these midi cuts um, all over Hollywood movies in the 40s. But here's my issue with seeing this cut as the quote unquote quintessential 1940s haircut. As he was a Hollywood stylist, I find it really hard to believe that this cut in particular 
was so well known or taught to the general public in the 40s prior to the publication of his book in 1947 when the war was already over. So after publication in 1947, this book was used for beauty schools to learn how to cut and style the hair. Um, so I tend to really look at the midi haircut as a very late 1940s and getting into the 1950s um, as that haircut. In photos from the 1940s, you absolutely see that U shape, that horseshoe shape in the back of the hair, but little to no layers are seen, which makes me believe that the just a straight horseshoe cut is probably going to be more authentic for like the early 40s to mid 40s style um, rather than the midi cut. So length of the hair is also a factor. Um, so in the 1930s, the hair was generally above the shoulders, um, usually, you know, hanging out around the, the ear length, and it was cut into generally just a bob. Um, and then in the 1940s, the length was anywhere between like at the shoulders or just below the shoulders was, was typically the, the length. Now, of course, this is all dependent upon so many factors, um, such as geographic region that they lived in, occupation, socioeconomic status. So um, I'm just simply stating what the general style of those times were. I do get a lot of people asking me um, about hair length and if they can still achieve these vintage styles, these authentic vintage styles um, with hair sitting at like below the mid back or even sometimes down to the waist. Um, now, I'm not saying that you can't achieve these styles with hair that long, but in my opinion, it is so much harder to achieve that authentic look with that length of hair. Of course, there are ways that um, you can put the hair up to give the illusion of the, that length, that shorter length, um, but then you have the weight and the volume to contend with, and generally you're gonna lose that U shape um, when you're putting it up like that. Anyway, I digress. Um, so starting out with the right cut, is going to give you the best footing to creating an amazing vintage hairstyle. Whether it's the classic midi cut or a horseshoe cut with or without layers, um, these are gonna give you the shape and guide your hair into those beautiful curls that you need. So the thing that always screams that it's a modern interpretation of a vintage hairstyle or that it's using modern techniques is how smooth the hair is. And usually this comes from using heat tools. Heat tools change the texture of your hair and smooth out the cuticle, giving you that soft, smooth look. But that's not seen in authentic vintage hairstyling. The wet set reigned supreme in these eras. The electric curling iron, similar to what we know now, wasn't invented until 1959. Um, metal curling tongs were used in the Victorian era up to the 1950s, but they were very small barrels and had to be heated by an external heat source, usually over like a gas burner or a fire. So the heat was not consistent and I'm sure many a ringlet were burnt off. Pin curls were the most used and easiest way to create um, the curls that we see in the 1930s and 1940s. Rag curls and small metal rollers were also popular. Perming the hair actually became really popular in the 30s and 40s as a way that, to have the hair retain these sets, um, but they weren't used as a way, as a replacement for the daily or weekly pin curl or roller sets. They were just used um, to kind of create texture in the hair to help their sets last longer. In 1928, hairstylist Marjorie Joyner patented her version of the permanent wave machine. She was the first African-American woman to receive a United States patent. Initially, this device was created as a way to help women of color relax their hair into softer waves, which was the style at the time. Then it was recognized that the machine could also help to curl the hair of Caucasian women, 
and it soon became a staple in the salons in 1930s. In 1930s, Solomon Harper, an African-American engineer and inventor, is credited by with inventing the first thermostatic electrically powered hair rollers similar to what we know today as hot rollers. However, his design had been updated over the years um, and didn't really catch on in popularity until the 1960s. So in the 1930s and 40s, hair rollers were a thing, but they were small metal tubes and they pretty much created a similar curl as to like standing pin curls. The foam rollers that we know and love today, that I have in today, actually didn't come around until the 1950s. So to achieve the authentic looking curl and volume, a wet set is always gonna be your best bet over um, heat tools. Whether it's pin curls or rollers, um, even foam rollers, you are going to get that beautiful fluffy set every time. Shameless plug. Please be sure to watch my wet set video um, where I give you a full tutorial and I go into detail on the science behind why and how a wet set works. Okay, so I wanna show you some examples of hairstyles from the era versus the modern version so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we have Ginger Rogers and Jennifer Lawrence. So I can see the, the difference right away with how smooth um, Jennifer's hair is. This was most likely achieved by using a curling iron and then pinned to cool. Um, and then Ginger's hair was probably done using a wet set with finger waves and pin curls. So you can really see the difference, or at least I can. I, I hope I'm explaining it right <laughs> that you can understand um, where the smoothness of Jennifer's hair, and that's again caused by the heat set versus a wet set where you're gonna get a little bit more fluffy, a little bit of frizz, um, but you're also getting more volume. So another example are these so-called Hollywood waves. So again, you can see the modern version is smooth with no frizz or flyaways. And this is again achieved with a heat set, either hot rollers or a curling iron set. Um, as heat changes the texture and smooths the hair, it also compacts it and you lose some of that lovely volume. To me, authentically styled vintage hair is fluffy, it's frizzy, and it has movement to it. When I think of authentically styled vintage hair, I think of the everyday woman. Um, not a movie star, not a model, not somebody who's having their hair done for them. I think of a woman who may have limitations on her abilities or her knowledge of style, um, limited access to all of the latest products or limited time, which is very similar to most of us. I envision a woman pinning up her hair at night while sitting at her vanity and then brushes it out in the morning before going downstairs to make breakfast. I feel that authentic styles give us more allowance for mistakes and missteps. Um, it's not about perfection it's or perfectly coiffed hair. It's about practicality and creativity as we learn. I mean, look at these women. They are lovely and their hair is beautifully styled and most likely they did it themselves. my interpretation of what makes a vintage hairstyle look authentic. Whatever style or technique you decide is best for you, give yourself some grace, keep learning, and realize that a lot of times the imperfections are really what make the hairstyle authentic. I would absolutely love to hear what your ideas are of what makes a vintage hairstyle look authentic. So please make sure that you comment below and I'd love to have this discussion. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you always get notified of when a new video comes out. Okay, I will see you guys soon. Bye.